I'm Elizabeth Steele with Hamilton Native Outpost and yesterday we dug some cores for a field day that we have today. This is a core of an eastern gamma grass root system and I was super impressed with it and I wanted to share it. So eastern gamma grass has a root system that is deep, as deep as I am tall. So the root system is extremely deep and it also has a lot of roots. It's not like a carrot going into the soil. It's a very fibrous root system, kind of like hair uh, going into the soil. So there's a lot of different roots going down into the soil. And these roots are really impressive. I think as impressive as this plant is above ground, sometimes it's called, called the queen of the grasses. It is really impressive below ground. And so I wanted to share about the below ground growth, the roots of this plant today. It can grow through really dense layers of, insoil, of soil that are typically considered impenetrable to plants. So something like a clay pan, it can go down through a clay pan in the soil, which allows it access to water and nutrients that are stored in those layers below or in that clay pan that most plants, because it's impenetrable to them, can't get to. So this gives this plant a real advantage, but it also then, those nutrients and water can become available for other plants as well. The roots on this plant, as deep as they are, imagine roots as deep as I am tall, they only live less than two years, and then they're replaced by other roots. This plant could live to be quite old, even in human terms, quite old. And so, but it's always forming these new roots, and what this does is that can, those old roots, of course, can contribute to soil organic matter. They can be food for the microorganisms that are in the soil, but it also leaves these old root channels. When that root dies that's going through the soil, it leaves a channel where new roots can come down, either from this grass plant or even from another species. So if you can imagine, we've got this deep impenetrable layer. These roots can go down through it they start to make channels down through it. And then other plants and this plant can get more roots down through that clay pan. So we start to turn those impenetrable layers into usable layers with time. So this grass can also deal with waterlogged soils very well. It has something in those root cells called arenchyma cells. And basically, they're a transport mechanism from air above the ground to go down into the roots where the roots can't get oxygen because it's all waterlogged, just like you can't breathe underwater. This plant can't breathe underwater. Its roots can't breathe underwater. So it can take air from the, or oxygen from the air and transport it down to the very tips of its roots for use by itself. There's also some thought that its ability to take oxygen down into the soil Maybe be, may be able to ameliorate or make more favorable some unfavorable soil conditions, such as it, it may be able to change the oxidative state of some toxic manganese in the soil to some non-toxic forms. Um, so basically what it's doing is that oxygen is able to turn a toxic substance into a non-toxic substance. It's thought that that may be done. Uh, there's not a extensive lot known about it, but it is, has been proposed that that may be able to be, be a function of this plant taking that oxygen down. Another interesting thing about the root system of this plant is that it is very tolerant to soil acidity. So those low pHs, acid soils, it doesn't care. Aluminum toxicity, which is very common in our neck of the woods, down in the deep, especially with depth in the soil, the eastern gamma grass is not affected by the aluminum toxicity to a great degree. This plant uh, has a very interesting relationship with microorganisms as well. It has two. One is it has arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi that live next to those, uh, that live on the roots. And so Basically, there's a fungi and a plant growing together. The plant takes photosynthesis, uh, photosynthates, so it's photosynthesizing, taking in carbon from the air and sunlight from the sun, and it's turning that into food for the plant or sugars. It can transport those down into the roots of the plant 
share those with the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. And this has a bunch of functions. Uh, it's actually quite a benefit for obviously the fungi, but also for the plant. So it improves establishment of plants. So this is the common uh, benefits of the mycorrhizal fungi. So it improves the establishment of the plants when you've planted seed. It can acquire water and nutrients. So the fungus is more able to acquire those water and that water and nutrients than the plant is itself. And so in exchange for those sugars that the plant is giving that fungus, it is getting those that water and that nutrients. So especially phosphorus. Phosphorus is a big one that those fungi get for the plants. The other relationship that this plant has with soil microorganisms is that it has a relationship with bacteria. So the other was a fungi. This is a bacteria, a different type of organism. And it, by way of this, there's associative nitrogen fixation that happens. So basically, again, the plant is feeding sugars to the bacteria. The bacteria is able to take nitrogen from the air. The air is 70 or so percent nitrogen that we breathe, but plants can't use that form of nitrogen. So the bacteria can take that nitrogen, convert it into a form that the plant can use, give it to the plant in exchange for those sugars. So again, this is Eastern Gamma Grass. It's a super interesting plant below ground. Uh, it has a really good story. And it just makes me wonder what the stories of the other plants as far as their below ground growth is that are the native plants in a native grassland.